listeners, welcome to Off Over 50 and Fired Up. Now what? With Linda and Shelly. Last episode, we talked about how to keep the momentum. We reviewed 10 tips to keeping it positive and productive during your job search. And that's important because for most of us with experience, it's most likely that it's going to take longer for us to get an opportunity that's aligned with the salary and the level of position that we're looking for. And Linda, I think you have a little ditty about that. A ditty, Shelley? Uh, do you mean like a factoid? Is yeah, that what you're a talking factoid. About? A, ditty. a ditty. You never heard a ditty before? No, I never heard of a ditty factoid. <laughs> That's a new one on me. So the factoid is you need to allocate at least one month of job searching for every $10,000 of salary that you want to target. So for example, if you want a $100,000 job, you have to at least give 10 months for job searching to get that $100,000 job. Okay, Lynn, that's a little depressing. It's a little... But, it, but it's reality, right? It is reality. It is. So the higher the level of salary and the higher level of position, the more time you need to spend job searching. Right. And because it might take a little bit longer to get that job, it's really important that you manage your budget more efficiently and effectively. That's right. But before we get on with the topic at hand for being thrifty, Shelley, what wine recommendation do you have for our listeners? Well, of course, Linda, it's a red one. Of course. I'm recommending the Rock View Reserve. It's a Pinot Noir from Monterey, California. It's one of my favorites. So can you tell us something about the wine for our wine connoisseurs out there more than it tastes great? Yeah, I could tell you a little bit about it. I was told that it has cherry and pomegranate notes, whatever the hell that means, but I can tell you it's really tasty. Well, for those of you who like to look at wine pairings, since it's a Pinot Noir, it's going to taste very nicely with fish like salmon, some smoked meats, and assorted cheeses. Just a little little FYI for those Just of you. a little FYI. So, cheers! Now, let's get to our handoff discussion this week on being thrifty. So, Shelly, how are you doing on your budget? I'm not. I'm living like I still am working, Linda. That's my problem. I'm spend, spend, spending all the time. So you haven't really like been thrifty or cutting back? <sighs> I try, but not really. I'm, I'm the, my worst offense is I still go out to dinner all the time. I haven't really changed my lifestyle as much as I should or my priorities. How about you, Lynn? Well, for my husband and I, um, we really did have to kind of change our priorities, especially since we have a daughter who's in college. <clears throat> So we really did have to look at how to maximize our budget and get a little smarter, leverage some of the reward programs and perks and things like that to get some things done, especially around travel. So yeah, we did adjust. All right. So you're much better than me. I'm not better. Just more mindful. (laughs) So Shelly and I put a list of tips together because uh, Shelly's good at some other things having to do with taking advantage of investments and rewards programs and things than I am. And then, you know, we're a little bit more thrifty on the day-to-day basis. So we kind of put our heads together and put this list together. So Shelly, what's number one on the list? Number one is to set up a budget and track all your expenses. You got to really make sure you know what's going in and out. Yeah. And what I would do is from that list, you really need to start with the big stuff, look at how to consolidate debt um, and look at developing like a pay down strategy, um, looking at the things that really are of high interest first, see if you can transfer those over to lower interest. If things are really bad, there are actually services out there that people can go to, to try to help them consolidate and negotiate lower um, terms of payment. Number three is change your lifestyle. So don't be like Shelly, you know, don't have a champagne taste and a beer pocketbook right? Prioritize, prioritize. Look at the things that really are nice to have versus absolutely have to have. Things like no spend days. Have you done that, Shelly? No. Eat at home? Sometimes. Monitor and stretch those utilities? No. (laughs) I really have to brush up and use these tips. So number four is you can uh, leverage reward programs. Uh, A lot of us, especially who've worked over a long period of time, um, have done a lot of travel at work. And so we have airline miles, we have hotel. You can really take a look at those programs, even credit cards who give you points and things that you can uh, put towards um, hotels and airline trips and all those things. Look to see how you can utilize that. Remember you told me about that woman that you met that basically like 
looks at the credit cards and she gets on, gets the most points she can, and then is able to utilize those for all of her travel and basically travels around the world yeah. for, for free. Some people are really smart that way. But you have to be very detail-oriented for those because you have to cancel the credit card and in order to make sure that uh, you don't get any charges after you have the rewards point assigned. It's a lot of work, Lynn. It is. So be careful if you, you do go that route, that you have the time to be organized and, and detailed enough to keep track. And number five is really leveraging like Groupons and coupons and discount programs like AARP and AAA. I really like the Groupons. And number six is taking advantage of networking events. Our guest Scotty does a lot of these networking events, and he takes advantage of all the free food and the giveaways that they have at these events, not only the networking opportunity. So, yeah, Lynn, I know that Scotty talked about the different types of giveaways. So what was it that he was getting or bringing? So he gets a lot of bags, number one. So you get a lot of bags when you go on these things. And the other thing is you get a lot of books and, like, I would say like organization kind of paraphernalia, a lot of uh, things, sometimes some electronic things uh, that you can use. So, so st- stuff that'll help you in your job search. Or yeah, whatever. absolutely. Well, that's cool. That's cool. And number seven is about optimizing discounts offered by, you know, different times of day or your age. Like, you know, some nights, Linda and I on Tuesday nights, we'll go to a movie and a night movie, but we pay matinee prices, which is really cool. I like that. You know, it's nice to be able to go out, you know, or you could travel off season Right? You could even go to Costco and just like eat all the samples and then you're really full for either lunch or dinner. How cool is that? I love those little lines of people. They're all like little magnets and they go up to the samples. Hey, Shelly, you can't be eating those Costco treats all the time. You got to consider your health. They're not always healthy little snacks, you know. And that's number eight. Minimize those healthier costs. Keep yourself healthy. That's right. Unless you go to the gym a lot. And that's one thing I've been doing a lot of is going to the gym with a lot of my free time. And I feel like I'm healthier than I have been in many, many years. And then, yeah. And what does that also help you do? I mean, I I think one of the things is concentrating on your health when you have the time. It can also help you. You understand and optimize your insurance coverage, right? right? Which is number nine, you know, understand limitations of COBRA, which I have no clue about right now. And I really need to start concentrating on that because I think I'm almost out of time, but not sure. Right. So be, be very mindful about what you can do with your insurance coverage at this time because you do want to make sure that you optimize those costs um, and get the best deals that you can uh, in a timely fashion. And then last but not least, number 10 is make some easy money. There are lots of things you can do like online surveys. We talked about in episode 32 the consulting services that you can do, that there's you can put yourself on a list, and if they need sort of your expertise and background, they'll call you up for a one- or two-hour consultation, and you can make a couple hundred dollars, even four or $500 uh, in that time frame. So look at e- ways that you can do that. I know, Shelly, you have some other ones that you can take a look yeah, at. Yeah, we had looked up, uh, you know, and we saw with AARP mm-hmm. that there were some really cool things, right, that you could do just working from home, like you could be a customer service rep or you could be an online juror and I would love that because then I would feel like I'm my own judge Judy you know you know making making these decisions there's also you could be a virtual assistant you could be an online tutor so if there's something you're really good at you can do that and you know maybe be a writer or editor yeah there's lots of opportunities to work at home and do some jobs that people are looking for uh, for someone who has you know the spare time or time during the day or off hours to be able to do Uh, so that's important that you look at these online opportunities. So that's a wrap on our top 10 tips for being thrifty. Oh, Linda, you're so funny. I'm rubbing off on you. You are? Oh my God, I'm in trouble. Uh, So as always, you can find our 10 thrifty tips and other reference materials that we've talked about on this podcast and others in our off toolkit on our website www.over50andfiredup.com remember the new name fired up and don't forget that you can get our wine recommendations too so please give us your feedback and stories by going to our website and clicking on contact us and emailing us at off at gmail.com or comment on our twitter or linkedin sites Yes, and please remember to follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn. Thanks for listening. Bye.